Welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's story is called Brothers and Bees, an adaptation of a fable by the Brothers Grimm, written for you by Daniel Hines. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. Brothers and Bees Once upon a time, there were three brothers who lived with their parents in a small city. The oldest was named Manfred, but they called him Mighty Manfred because he was always the strongest around. The middle brother was named Kurtz, but they called him Clever Kurtz because he was always the smartest around. The youngest brother was named Jacob, but his brothers called him Gentle Jacob because he wasn't as strong as Manfred or as smart as Kurtz. Every morning, Mighty Manfred would work hauling shingles and tease his youngest brother, who would spend his days taking care of injured animals he found in the woods. Gentle Jacob, leave those critters alone and come do some real work. Animals are for eating, and arms are for working. Don't be such a wimp. The comments hurt Jacob's feelings, but he'd learn to ignore them. Let his brother be mean. He would finish helping a little duck who got caught in some netting. But every afternoon, clever Kurtz would come by, his nose in a book and ink marks staining his fingers. Gentle Jacob, stop with the animals and come do some real work. You need to do something worthwhile with your time. This hurt Jacob's feelings, too, but he could ignore Kurtz as well as he could ignore Manfred. Let his brothers be mean. He would finish pulling a thorn out of an old cat's paw. But of course, no matter how much he ignored them, his brothers never stopped. They were always teasing him, bullying him, and they always thought being gentle was the same thing as being weak. But Jacob disagreed. Being a strong worker was good, and being clever was good, too, But Jacob knew there was nothing wrong with being gentle and kind. One day, the small city realized they hadn't heard from the king and queen that lived nearby. The royal couple only ruled over a small area, but they often sent food to the brothers' village, especially when times were tough. And times were always tough. The city was worried something terrible had happened and they decided to send Mighty Manfred and Clever Kurtz to investigate. Manfred was the strongest, so he could win any fight. Kurtz was the smartest, so he could solve any puzzle. Their father demanded they take Gentle Jacob, too, so he could carry their bags and maybe learn something along the way. The three brothers set off into the woods, following the dark and winding trail that led to the royal castle. They traveled for a good long while and then decided they were hungry. Their mother had packed them hard cheese and hard sausage and soft bread, and they split it up to eat for lunch. The older brothers took bigger portions and gave Gentle Jacob the smallest. As they were finishing up, they saw a line of black ants marching from their hill. The little bugs grabbed crumbs of the hard cheese and the hard sausage and most of all, the soft bread. Ugh, little pests, said Mighty Manfred. I should crush you. Even better, brother, said Clever Kurtz. We should find their anthill and destroy them all at once. The two brothers immediately followed the ants back to their hill and prepared to smash it. No, said Gentle Jacob. They're just hungry like us, and we're leaving for the castle anyway. Let them have the crumbs. They aren't hurting anyone. The older brothers rolled their eyes and scoffed, but left the anthill alone. They packed up and started walking again, heading towards the castle. As the sun began to set, they looked for a good place by the path to sleep for the night. What do you think is wrong with the king and queen? asked Manfred. Could be anything, said Kurtz. Maybe they went to war, maybe they got sick, maybe they just forgot about us. Oh, they wouldn't do that, said Jacob. They know we rely on them for food. Speaking of food, said Kurtz, nudging Manfred. Look at those ducks on the pond. A little roast duck would make for some tasty dinner. Oh, yeah, it would, agreed Manfred, bending and picking up a rock in his heavy fist. Watch this throw, brothers. He wound up, his mighty muscles bunching. 
But just as he started to throw, Jacob nudged his elbow. The rock went wild, splashing into the water and scaring the ducks. They quacked angrily and took to the air, flying off to find a more peaceful place to sleep. Why did you do that? Mighty Manfred yelled at his youngest brother. You ruined our dinner, snapped Clever Kurtz. We have more sausage and cheese, said Gentle Jacob. Why kill a duck when we already have enough? The older brothers rolled their eyes and scoffed, but the ducks had already taken flight, so they left it alone. Instead, they had their dinner of cheese and bread and sausage and went to sleep, knowing that tomorrow they'd reach the castle. They started early the next morning, and the forest began to thin around them. They knew the castle was close, but they paused when they heard a strange hum coming from a hollow tree. Could be wild magic, said Mighty Manfred. Should I knock the tree down? Could be something good, said Clever Kurtz. We should check first. What if it's dangerous? asked Manfred. The two brothers looked at each other and then turned to gentle Jacob. You You go go check check it. it. Jacob thought about arguing, but he knew that his older brothers would only bully him until he did it anyway. Nervous, he walked to the tree and peered into the hollow. Luckily, the humming wasn't any dangerous magic. It was just a big hive of bees, all buzzing together. Their combs were dripping with honey, and Jacob knew his brothers would want to smoke out the bees and eat it all for breakfast. Oh, I can't see anything, he lied. Ugh, let's keep going then, said Manfred. We're almost to the castle, agreed Kurtz. Jacob breathed a sigh of relief and off they headed to the castle of the king and queen. They arrived early in the afternoon and immediately saw that something wasn't right. The castle stood on a low hill and its wooden drawbridge was down, but it was also turned to stone. A new bridge? asked Mighty Manfred. No, said Clever Kurtz, a magic curse, for certain. The brothers walked into the castle carefully and saw that Kurtz was right. Inside, everything had been turned to stone. The wooden torches had turned solid and gray, even the flames. The people were hard and still as statues. They found a stone cook pulling a stone loaf of bread from a stone oven the stone king holding hands with the stone queen, and even a stone cat creeping up on a stone bird in the rafters. Finally, in the castle basement, they found the royal wizard, a stone statue at his stone desk. In his hand was a rocky quill, still touching the now slab of paper he was writing on. It was hard to see the dark marks on the dark stone, but Manfred got a torch. Jacob tried to read, but Kurtz pushed him back. This is a job for the clever, not for a wimp, he said, then turned to the desk. The princess ate a spoonful of honey, cursed by a witch, the wizard had written. We have only minutes before the curse turns us all to stone. If you are reading this, there is still hope. Gather the queen's pearls from the royal garden, but be careful. After you touch the first, you have only a minute to gather them all or you'll be cursed as well. Take the pearls to the bottom of the royal lake and trade them to the mermaids there. They are magical creatures and will take the pearls in trade for a spoonful of cure. Give the cure to the princess and that should... The quill froze there in place, but luckily the wizard had gotten far enough. Okay, we need to get the pearls, said Mighty Manfred. I'm the most athletic, so I should be the one to do it. And get all the glory? asked Clever Kurtz. I'm the oldest, said Manfred, pushing past his brothers and into the garden. They all froze for a moment. The garden had surely been beautiful once, but now it was a strange forest of rock, all gray and no green. Here and there, shining like little white beacons among the stone, they could see the queen's pearls. Watch me go, Manfred yelled, and then he ran into the garden. 
He grabbed a pearl and then another, vaulting over stone shrubs and climbing rocky ridges of bark. He got five pearls, ten, a dozen, and then he started to slow. Manfred, gentle Jacob yelled, be careful. Be quiet, wimp, Manfred said, even as the gray crept up his body and he turned completely to stone. The pearls he'd gathered went flying from his hands and rolled to all corners of the garden. Our brother, Jacob cried. We just need to break the curse, said Clever Kurtz. I won't rush in like he did. This needs a more careful approach. Kurtz walked through the garden, careful not to touch anything. He found every pearl he could and made note of where they were. Three behind the stone root, two in the hollow of the tree, four by the rocky roses. Be careful, brother, said Jacob. Don't bug me, snapped Kurtz. I know what I'm doing. Why don't you go find some animals to bother? Ugh. Jacob sighed and stayed out of the way, watching from the entrance. Soon, Kurtz had finished his mapping and started scooping pearls. He quickly got five, ten, fifteen, and then he started to slow. He picked up another pearl and tried to take a step and then froze in place, completely turned to stone. The pearls he had gathered burst from his hands and spread all over the garden again. Gentle Jacob sighed and walked forward. He didn't imagine he'd do better than Mighty Manfred or Clever Kurtz, but they were his brothers, and he had to at least try. All right, then, he said. Here goes nothing. Gentle Jacob grabbed a pearl and another and another, but already he could feel himself starting to slow. He couldn't leap and climb like Mighty Manfred. He couldn't map out a route like Clever Kurtz, but he kept on trying. He grabbed five pearls, ten, and then he saw his fingertips were starting to turn to stone. Help, he called, not expecting anyone to come. I need to save my brothers. I need to save the castle. And then he felt a pearl clatter into his hands, and then another. With wonder, he looked down and saw an army of black picnic ants. They had swarmed over the garden and found every last pearl, pulling them from under rocky roots and stony stems and bringing them straight to Jacob. With wonder, Jacob realized that these were the same ants he had saved from his brothers, and now they were paying him back. Thank you, he cried as the last ant clattered a pearl into his hands. Thank you so much. His fingers turned from stone back to skin, and the challenge was completed. We did it, Jacob cried in celebration. But when he turned to his brothers, they were still stuck as stone statues. Oh no, they're cursed the same as the castle. Gentle Jacob wanted to cry, but he knew he didn't have time. If he was going to save the castle and his brothers, mean as they were, he had to break the spell. He ran straight to the royal lake, a beautiful pool of shimmering blue. Thankfully, it was outside of the castle proper, so it hadn't been turned to stone. Jacob waded into the shallow edge, his pocket bulging with the queen's pearls. He'd never been a very strong swimmer, but he'd come too far to turn back now. Here goes nothing, he said, and then dove into the water. It was clear and cool, and he could see two mermaids far below him, chasing each other through the ruins of an old ship and laughing happily. Jacob swam and swam and swam, his breath growing tight in his chest. The mermaids were still so far away, and he couldn't hold his breath much longer. Mermaids, he called. Trade me. He pulled the fistful of pearls from his pocket. Unfortunately, his words came out, blub, 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 and his head started to pound, his lungs screaming for air. I'm not going to make it, gentle Jacob realized suddenly. The mermaids were still far, far below, and he was out of breath. With a wail of despair, he was forced to drop the pearls and swim like mad for the surface of the lake. 
He burst from the water and drew a deep, whooshing breath, and then another, panting and treading water until he could finally breathe again. Unfortunately, he'd lost every last pearl. He could see them twinkling and sinking into the depths, lost like stars in an endless sky. No! My brothers! The castle! Quack, quack! What in the world? Gentle Jacob looked up and saw a flock of ducks circling above him. In a flash, he recognized that they were the ducks from the trail, the ones he'd saved from his brother's rock. They quacked at him happily and then dove into the water, the entire flock, all at once. Jacob cheered as he watched them catch the pearls in their beaks and then dive deeper, giving them to the mermaids. The mermaids oohed and awed and then took a tiny bottle from inside a little clam purse and gave it to the last duck. The duck swam back to the surface and dropped the bottle in Jacob's hand. Thank you, ducks. Thank you so, so much. Quack, 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 the duck said back. And it was hard to tell with the beak, but Jacob was pretty sure it was smiling at him. Then the flock took to the air, flying back to their pond in the woods. Gentle Jacob swam as fast as he could to the shore and burst into the stone castle. He ran down stone hallways and through stone bedrooms and finally skidded to a halt in the stone throne room. Now to give this cure to the princess, he said, holding up the little bottle from the mermaids. Oh, no. Which one is she? He looked around the throne room and his heart sank. The king and queen were on their thrones, but they were surrounded by a crowd of statues, dozens and dozens of people. Gentle Jacob walked through them. He could eliminate the adults and the older boys, but all of the kids looked the same, and it was hard to tell a young woman from an older one when all you could see was smooth gray, and that left a dozen options. Gentle Jacob looked at the bottle. Of course, there was only a tiny little bit a single sloshing sip. If he guessed wrong, there wouldn't be enough for another try, and the castle and his brothers would be stuck as stone forever. What do I do? He said to himself, sinking down on a stone bench. How can I find the princess? It was then that he heard a strange hum, a steady buzz. It was the bees from the trail, the ones he had saved from his brothers. They swarmed into the throne room and began to buzz about, flying around all the statues. Thanks, bees, but I don't know how you can... He trailed off, remembering the wizard's letter. Oh, the princess ate cursed honey! Even as he remembered, the bees began to circle one of the statues. It was a small girl playing ball with three others, the ball now a boulder frozen in midair. As Jacob watched, the bees flew about the girl's mouth, buzzing happily. She's, she's the one? You're sure? The bees buzzed again, louder and more urgent. Okay, I believe you, Jacob said. Here goes nothing. He took the little bottle and poured it into a stone spoon from the table. It barely filled the spoon halfway, and Jacob's hands were shaking so badly he was afraid he'd spill it. Please work, he whispered, and then he tilted the spoon into the princess's mouth. The liquid disappeared into the stone, and then nothing happened. What now? Jacob cried, falling to the floor. What now? Jacob's head snapped up. Who had said that? Ugh, I feel stiff, the princess said, and then... Like the sun coming out from behind the clouds, she was filled with color. Starting with her, the color spread through the castle like a mad army of invisible artists. The color was splashed and sprayed and dripped and washed on everyone and everything. Soon, the queen's crown turned golden, the king's cheeks ruddy and red. The people in the throne room snapped back from stone gray to vivid color, and they all gave a mighty cheer. We're free, they called. The curse has been broken. Our hero, said the princess, taking gentle Jacob's hand and lifting it high. Our hero.
The crowd cheered again, and this time they were joined by Mighty Manfred and Clever Kurtz. Oh, sorry I was mean to you, man, said Manfred. You're strong in your own way. I'm sorry, too, said Kurtz. It's good to be gentle, and as clever as I was, I didn't realize that. I'll think twice before I scoff at you again. And I'll thump anyone who's mean to my hero brother, added Manfred, which kind of missed the point of gentleness, but he was trying. The kingdom threw a parade for gentle Jacob, carried on his older brother's shoulders, and the king and queen gave him the position of royal gamekeeper, charged with keeping all the animals of the kingdom safe. It was a hard job, but gentle Jacob loved every second of it. And they all lived happily ever after. The End Thanks for listening!